Dr. Dudley Golden, the UT Health Science Center, is with us. We're talking about uh, heart medications. And the first question is, Doctor, what are the differences, and I'm going to have to look at my notes here to, to get all of this, what are the differences between beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors, and statins in the treatment of heart disease? Well, they each do a different, uh, they each have a different method of action. You want to start over? Or no, oh, you're, okay. fine. All right. you're fine. They each have a different mode of action, and this is sometimes confusing because you wonder why am I on three or four different heart pills. But one uh, heart pill might... Uh, slow the heart rate, another might uh, open up the blood vessels so that you get more blood flow. And so we try to use medicines that have complementary functions so that they ad they're additive together. How successful are these medications in treating heart disease? Well, they can be very successful. For example, uh, some of the medicines we know that in the past, say 20 years ago, that people on blood pressure medicines they might only be 30% of them would have a blood pressure that you were trying to obtain, where nowadays, if you're not over 50%, you're really not doing an adequate job. So there's been tremendous gains in the control of blood pressure, control of angina, heart failure. Are there side effects to be concerned about with these medications? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think just about every, almost every medicine we use has some form of uh, side effect. Not all patients will have the side effects, uh, but for example, a medication might slow the pulse and cause fatigue. Another medication might cause lightheadedness if you stand up suddenly. Uh, so it, it is important that you become aware of what side effects you might have. And then when you're on more than one medicine, you have to try to sort out which side effect might be related to which medicine. Is there any one medication that's proved to be better than others in treating heart disease? I don't think so because they tend to, uh, like I said earlier, have a complementary function. Um, there are multiple medicines that are first line for blood pressure, for example, uh, and that one is no better than the other. Uh, in terms of angina, perhaps a beta blocker might be more useful for there than an ACE inhibitor, but an ACE inhibitor is more useful in protecting the kidneys. Uh, so you have to look at exactly what you're treating and decide what medicine will get you there. If I have high blood pressure, say, is it a given that I should be taking a diuretic? Well, certainly diuretics are first-line therapy for high blood pressure. Why is that so? Most people think that all blood pressure medicines seem to work better in the presence of a diuretic. And this has to do with how the kidney handles water and salt. So that you might get by on a, just a simple blood pressure medicine that doesn't include a diuretic, but if you have difficult to control blood pressure, it may just mean that you need a little diuretic added to that blood pressure medicine. Most patients are on a diuretic. Are heart disease medications like statins, aspirin, beta blockers underutilized in treating uh, heart disease in women? Uh, in general, that's true. Not as much today as it was, say, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but there was an underappreciation of the type of heart disease that women have. And it was, un was not really recognized that women actually have more heart disease than men do. And so until everyone became aware of how prominent or how prevalent heart disease was in women, the medicines in general were underutilized. I don't think that's any true any longer, especially for high blood pressure. We know that the control rates in women are equal to those of men. Same with cholesterol. There probably is still a tendency, however, to think of heart disease as a man's disease, and that's clearly not true. Among adults, let's draw a line at age 50. Among adults age 50 or above, what percentage of those of that group would suffer high blood pressure? Well, high blood pressure is clearly linked to age. And if you start at age 50 and look at each decade after that, it's a stepwise progression uh, so that by the time age 80, well over 10 uh, percent of people have high blood pressure. Uh, the exact percentage, though, goes up every year from 50 on. Uh, what is your opinion with respect to daily aspirin therapy and, and, the, and the prevention of heart disease? Well, recently there's been a little uh, 
uh, publicity on that uh, where there was a study suggesting that uh, perhaps the risk of the aspirin might outweigh the benefit. My personal opinion is that 81 milligram aspirin, which is a so-called baby aspirin per day for adults, is beneficial both for primary and secondary prevention. What, what does the aspirin do? How does it act? It's a platelet inhibitor. Uh, and it makes the uh, platelets so that they're less likely to, to clump together and form clots, and that's its primary uh, mode of action. It's also, in a low dose, an extremely safe drug. Well, and that kind of segues into our next question. Are there potential problems with the long-term use of heart disease medications that could potentially outweigh the benefits? Well, some heart medicines, such as beta blockers, have been around for 50 years, and I'm not aware of any long-range study that shows that the beta blockers have developed long-term side effects. The same is probably true for calcium channel blockers and for the ACE inhibitors, which have now been around for 30 years. If there's any class of drug that people keep a close eye on, it's the statins for the cholesterol. They're highly, highly effective drugs that do exactly what they're supposed to do, but there has been concerns about the effect on muscles and so forth. And so we keep an eye on the statins as we do all the drugs. And looking to the future, are there any promising heart disease medications on the horizon? Well, for example, within the last couple of years, an entirely new class of blood pressure medicine was introduced, which uh, got at the basic mechanism for high blood pressure at the kidney level. Uh, this was the first new class of medications that's been released in probably well over a decade. So the answer to the question is yes, there are, are new drugs that are continuously being developed, entirely new classes of medicines, but as I'm sure everyone is probably aware, this is a long, expensive process to start with the test tube and bring a drug to market. Very well. Thank you for your time today, Doctor. You're welcome.